to talk about kind of where the bill started and where it is now? There's been... So the bill started in a cave somewhere, uh, you know, in a remote area, probably in the dawn of time, as far as I can tell, because the uh, photo ID bill is something that's been on, that Republicans have raised since I've been in the legislature in 2007. I, was, I started here, it was here before I got here. Uh, I happen to be one of the people uh, dealing with the issue because I've been on the committees dealing with elections the whole time I've been here and been involved in some of the big election bills. So um, my involvement with it has been for the last four years. Um, this year, with Republicans controlling the legislature, they are finally in a position to move the bills in both the House and the Senate. Um, and they're doing so. There are two bills um, on photo ID that we've heard from with different bill authors. They basically both do the same thing, which is that they require a picture ID uh, with a current address in order to vote. And um, uh, one of them is, has other provisions included with it. The other is just a really simple photo ID bill. But uh, we've heard them both in committee. There have been eight, something like eight hearings so far in a legislative session about photo ID. Uh, you know, and those things are typically lasting three or four hours each. Clearly, the Tea Party and the kind of uh, you know fired up base of the Republican Party really is 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 working hard on this issue because whenever we have a hearing, they have you know 20, 30 people ready to come and testify in favor of the photo ID bill. So um, I suspect it'll be here as an issue after I'm gone too. So do you think that? They will pass it this session. I well, I don't know if the Republicans will pass it this session. I think they'll pass it this session or next session, um, and I expect they'll pass a bill and the governor will veto it. Um, I think their next movement is to um, pass it out of the legislature and put it on the ballot for a, as a constitutional amendment in the 2012 election. And in order to get it on the ballot, they don't need to have the governor sign the bill. It just gets passed with the majority of legislators and. It, goes on the ballot. Um, so could you talk a little bit about how um, the funding for it has changed? Because originally there was all these electronic poll books um, right. and digital scanners and that was going to cost a lot more money, but now it's being said that those are optional for counties? Right. The original bill, this, and this is Representative Kiffmeyer's bill, the former Secretary of State, it was you know something like a $40 million price tag. They wanted to have basically um, the, you know, specialized voting equipment for registration at every polling place in the state, and which you know, and I think there are something like 4,000 polling places in the state of Minnesota. Um, so, and many of which don't have any kind of connection to a phone line, much less broadband, that would be required to do this. So, it was an extremely impractical suggestion that you're going to buy this electronic voting equipment for all these. Uh, uh, polling places all over the state. So that's one of the reasons why the numbers got so high. Well, now they've just made that optional. Um, and so they're bringing down the expense quite a bit, but they still have the same basic problem with the bill, which is that they're making it more difficult for certain groups of people to turn out and vote. So Senator Limmer for Senate File 509 said that um, the voter ID bill would take out money from transportation reserves. Um, so does it take out money from any other areas of the budget? Well, um, what and this is interesting. We don't know yet where they're going to get the money for this. We know that there's some money left in the general fund after we pass our budget bills that they didn't, that Republicans didn't spend. That we're trying to reserve in case of uh, we need it for flood relief. Um, so this money would come out of the flood relief dollars that we have reserved. Uh, and some of the money would come from the Help America Vote account, which is federal money that we get to the state of Minnesota to make our elections work better. And that would make sense, except the, for the fact that we already used that money in the Help America Vote account to do things like matching the voter registration rule with uh, the Department of Health database of people who've died. So we're taking dead people off the voter rolls. That's a good thing, right? That's what we're using federal money for already. This would divert some of that money and use it for a photo ID solution. So you're actually taking money away from, uh, from programs that we're doing now that makes um, voter fraud less likely and shifting it to a program that would have almost zero impact on voter fraud, in addition to the fact that you're using money from flood relief.
even though um, the price tag isn't quite as steep as it was when it was introduced, there's still a price tag associated with it. And we're seeing cuts to transportation, we're seeing cuts to higher education, cuts to health and human services. Um, so I guess why are legislators willing to spend state dollars on this when they're cutting other areas of the budget that yeah. might need well, more? It's not, I mean, we have no money. We, we have negative $5 billion, <laughs> you know? So then to, so even though a proposal costs $6 million, which, you know, in the, in the state budget is not the biggest item by any means, they cost real money when we have negative money. We have zero, we have less than zero. So spending any money on a new program for, for a problem that doesn't exist and for, to pay for a solution that creates problems for people to exercise a fundamental right just doesn't seem like it's a very good priority. And it's one of the issues that, that uh, we've raised with Bill. There are some facts we know. Um, in 2008, when we had the Coleman Franken recount and everybody was poring over the election results, um, Norm Coleman and his lawyer spent $3 million to fight the recount to try to find any case of voter fraud that would turn one ballot, you know, or a few ballots the other direction. And the, Norm Coleman's lawyer said that they were looking for voter fraud and they couldn't find it. So if there's anybody who's ever really been motivated to find it, it would have been them, and they couldn't after spending a lot of money. Uh, there were 38 cases of felons voting in Minnesota in 2008, so it's illegal for a felon to vote until they're off parole, so they, their civil rights are fully restored. Well, 38, in 38 cases they voted in 2008. But the problem is that photo ID wouldn't correct that, because a felon can have a driver's license even though they can't vote. So the photo ID doesn't really help with that. And you have to wonder, is it a good idea to spend six million dollars on a program to stop 38 felons from voting, especially when that six million dollar program doesn't even solve the problem, you know? So it's more about, you know, we try to look for facts and, and information to base our decisions on. Um, in a case like this, it's, you know, the indications are there isn't voter fraud in Minnesota, and we have an expensive solution to a non-existent problem.